income countries, um, many donors were involved in sort of regular um, um, collections of funding for emergency assistance, um, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, they felt that what, what, what is needed is to move to a more stable means of providing assistance to food and secure households in sub-Saharan Africa. So that, that is kind of the explanation there. In middle income countries, it's simply because of the initiative of middle income countries in moving in this direction. And then kind of funders and donors coming behind and providing support for them. So what part of social protection has shown the best results so far? I think um, these uh, social protection programs that have a human development component that try to build assets, um, productive assets, in uh, understood in a broad sense of not just uh, you know physical and financial assets, but also human assets. I think those tend to have the most, the greatest effectiveness, and the I think the greater likelihood of having a long-term impact on the on the recipient households. Uh, you say that uh, foreign aid have an uh, important but limited role in uh, social protection. What does that mean? Well, I, I don't think that uh, the, uh, there is uh, an appropriate role for foreign aid in actually financing transfers in developing countries. Um, I, I think it, aid is too volatile. I think it's um, not sufficiently um, political enough to involve um, the governing coalitions in developing countries to really make a, a, a significant uh, effect, a positive effect on, on, on developing countries. I mean, I, I'm, for example, I'm, I'm a UK taxpayer. I would not advise anybody to depend on UK taxpayer for their social protection. So uh, ultimately, the, um, social protection must be developed out of internal sources of financing. So that limits the role of aid. <clears throat> However, role has, um, aid has a very important role in, in, in supporting infrastructure development and capacity building uh, in particularly low-income countries. I mean, to give you an example, uh, Zambia has 50 districts, has two social workers per district. That is never going to be sufficient for an effective poverty reduction uh, kind of a strategy and, and, and program. So you, you need capacity development, you need infrastructure development. And the, the other point that is really important is the issue of um, registration of children. Because um, um, any anti-poverty program requires to know how many people need support, when, when they were born, are they school age, where do they live, uh, and that is crucial. So supporting, for example, um, 100% birth registration is really an important step forward. So there is, a, there is an important role for aid there, but it's limited. I don't think aid should fund actual transfers. But at the same time you say that the foreign aid in social protection is probably the best evaluated, I mean, from the donor perspective, why is that? I, I think it's because there, there is a resistance um, among um, a kind of uh, voters and taxpayers in, in donor countries as to how their, their kind of resources to aid, uh, for aid are used. And I think that resistance is met, has been met on the part of um, multilaterals and increasingly bilateral agencies uh, with um, um, evaluations that demonstrate the effectiveness of these programs. So um, if, you, if you, for example, if you want um, 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 international aid to support uh, microfinance, very few people will complain about it. If you, if you, um, if you want uh, aid to support um, 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 small and medium enterprise development in developing countries, no one would complain about that. But if you say we're going to use aid to support programs that provide direct transfers in cash to families in poverty, there is gr much greater resistance. And that is really where uh, evaluation has come as a means of overcoming that kind of political resistance to this, to this strategy.